The purpose of this segment is to discuss how to go about naming molecules that have not just one alkene group, but more than one alkene group. And this particular segment um, assumes that you have already mastered looking at molecules with single alkene groups and coming up with IUPAC names for those. If you haven't, then you should go back to the previous video in the series and look at the IUPAC guidelines for naming alkene molecules. So here we're going to move along and look at naming molecules that have not just one alkene group, but more than one alkene group, such as the molecule that we see below. And I'm going to throw out a little bit of general terminology to get started here. And that general terminology is that if we have more than one alkene group, if we have two alkene groups, we're going to refer to the molecule as a diene. And we can dissect that word. Ene means alkene, di means two. So a diene is a molecule with two carbon-carbon double bonds, two alkene groups. Triene is going to be a molecule that has three alkene groups, since tri means three. Tetraene, tetra means four, so a tetraene is a molecule that has four alkene groups. And we can go onward up from there. You could assign various names to assess how many alkene groups there are, such as pentaene, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but generally, when we get up to around four or more alkene groups, we refer to the molecule simply as being a polyene, a molecule that has many alkene groups or polyalkene groups. So it's going to have many carbon-carbon double bonds. We will run into a lot of molecules, particularly in nature, such as the molecule called lycopene, which is a pigment molecule produced by tomatoes that is thought to have nutritional effects, which we would classify as a polyene because it is a molecule that has many alkene groups present in it. So by the end of this segment, you should be comfortable with coming up with IUPAC names for molecules that have more than one alkene group. We're going to focus typically on molecules that have somewhere between two and four alkene groups at most in our discussion of coming up with IUPAC names for molecules that have multiple alkene groups. So let's go ahead and get started and go through the guidelines for naming molecules that have multiple alkene groups. So these dienes, trienes, and tetraenes. So now we'll go ahead and walk through the rules for naming molecules that have more than one alkene group, and we'll go through an example problem. You're going to see a lot of parallels here between naming these molecules and naming molecules with just one alkene group. The main thing that's going to be different is the parent name that you come up with and the fact that when we think about the longest carbon chain, it has to include all of the carbons of the carbon-carbon double bonds. So first thing we're going to do is look for the longest carbon chain that includes all of the alkene groups, and we're going to go ahead and highlight that to take care of number one here. So we have two alkene groups in this molecule here at the right. Finding the longest carbon chain that incorporates both of them is going to take us through the molecule like so. So the longest carbon chain here, the priority for deciding what the longest carbon chain is, is it has to be the longest carbon chain that includes all the alkene groups. Don't look for carbon chains that do not include all of the alkene groups. Got to have every single carbon-carbon double bond atom in there, which we do in this chain. So that takes care of step one. Step two, we're going to number the chain from the end that starts closer to where we see the first alkene carbon. If there's a tie, meaning that if both of the alkene groups start at carbon number two, regardless of whether you start number from the left or the right, then you're going to take a look at the branches and number from the end that's closer to a branch. But the first priority here is to number from the end that is closer to an alkene group. So in this molecule, we're going to start numbering from this side, one, two, three, because that's going to put an alkene group at number three. Whereas if we started numbering from the left-hand side, that would put our first alkene group at carbon four. So we've got to number all of our carbon atoms here, coming up with a total of 10. So now we need to go about naming the parent chain. And to name the parent chain, the template that we're going to use is we name the parent chain as an alka diene triene alka tetraene, where the alka is going to indicate how many carbon atoms are in that chain. And then the diene, triene, or tetraene term indicates how many alkene groups there are. So our parent name here for this molecule that we've traced out the parent chain of there using our gray highlighter, and we have 10 carbons in the chain. So 10 carbon alkane would be decane. So since this is a 10 carbon diene, we're going to call it deca. And yes, we do include the A there from decane. 
but then we put the term diene in to indicate to us that it is a molecule that has two alkene groups there in that 10 carbon chain. All right, so we've taken care of the parent name. And then within that parent name, we need to specify the location here at step four of all of the carbon-carbon double bonds using numerical prefixes. Much like when we were naming alkenes, we had to indicate the first carbon atom at which the alkene group was found. Here we have to indicate the first carbon atom number of both of the two alkene groups. So we're gonna use the template of XY alkadiene, where X and Y are the numerical locations of each alkene group. Or alternatively, you can name it as alka-X comma Y dash diene to indicate the location of those alkene groups. Much like when we were naming molecules as just a single alkene group, we could call molecules something like 2-pentene, or we could refer to them as pent-2-ene, either or were acceptable. Similarly here, we have two different locations where it's perfectly acceptable to put in your numbers at the very front of the parent name or there kind of in the middle of the parent name to hyphenate alka and diene, indicating that X and Y there are the two carbon atoms where the alkene group starts at. So going about this for our example problem, for our decadiene molecule, we see that it is at carbon number three is where one of the alkene groups starts. And at carbon number six is where the other alkene group starts. So we're gonna call this three comma six dash, always separating numbers from letters with dashes, decadiene. The alternative for the parent name here, using our other formatting templates, we just used the XY alka diene template, would be to name it as an alka XY diene. So our alka part of the name is deca dash three comma six dash diene. And either of these two terminologies are totally acceptable for naming the parent chain here. And we're not quite done yet. Now we need to go onward with indicating the name and location of all of the branches. And we're gonna do this using the exact same methodology that we've used all along for naming branches as different alkyl groups, or if we had a halogen branch come off, they'd be named as various halo groups, such as bromo, chloro, et cetera. We're gonna go in and name those. So let's go ahead and do that. We see two branches coming off of our main chain there. Our main chain again is in gray. We have a methyl branch here, and hopefully you recall that this is called an isopropyl branch right here. So we'll go ahead and plug those names in at the front. I'm gonna color code those in green. And it's a methyl and an isopropyl, and iso comes before methyl in the alphabet. So we're gonna name this with the iso branch first, so seven isopropyl, three methyl, and I'm always using those dashes to separate numbers and letters, dash three, six decadiene. Or alternatively, we could use that same terminology, seven isopropyl, three methyl, and then put the word deca, three, six diene as an alternative to that. And if we did it that way, keep in mind that there would be no dash separating methyl from deca. It would just go methyl as one giant word, deca, and onward from there. And do keep in mind that the isopropyl group, if you prefer to use, rather than the terms iso and things like that, you can look within this branch, count how many atoms are in the longest carbon chain in the branch, that's two. And note that at carbon one of that two carbon branch, you have a methyl group coming off, so we could call this also a one methyl ethyl group or a one methyl ethyl branch. I put that in parentheses since that is a branch and I could plug that in as the name for this molecule as well. If we do that, it's gonna alter the alphabetization a bit because methyl comes before methyl ethyl in the alphabet. So if we wanna do it that way, what we need to do is go ahead and plug in our methyl group first in the name. So we're gonna do three methyl, keeping this in alphabetical order, dash seven, and then a dash before we put in our parentheses to indicate that our one methyl ethyl group is at position seven. Let's go ahead and fill in one methyl ethyl. And then onward from there, the rest of the name would be the same as we've written in red up here. So we could do three, six, deca, diene. And I'm running out of room on my screen, so I'm just gonna put dot, dot, dot there. Or alternatively, we could do three methyl, seven, parentheses, one methyl ethyl, 
DACA 3,6 diene. Either of those would be acceptable as well. So this is how we go about naming molecules that have multiple alkene groups, meaning that they are dienes, trienes, tetraenes, or polyenes, molecules that have lots of alkene groups. In the next segment, what we're going to look at is additional examples of naming alkenes and dienes. And we're also going to start looking at the stereochemistry of these molecules and how we can specify that within our molecular names. So stay tuned for that in the next segment.